Just Another Job, Part 7, Henchman. Rem outright picked the very first items his eyes saw after he opened the chest. It was a dark blue, lined in black runes, hooded cloak. The thing was infused with invisibility magic and could hide him completely, sustaining its shroud for half an hour at best. Even if he didn't use its magic, it was a good cloak and aided him since he was skilled in evading detection. It was best used under the cover of darkness, although the spell could be activated any time and worked perfectly even under the brightest of sunlight. The solver of problems quickly left the library and his trusty alchemist behind. Of course, he pocketed Felk's special chest opener. Just in case, if Rem needed to check the contents of this chest and break his contract. As a matter of fact, the Countess was awfully specific about the contents of her special reinforced box not being seen by anyone except her. Then again, she was a Lavoa. The Countess could make his life in Karat really hard. And with the frost coming in a month, hopefully do, Rim had to return and assume his usual operations within the confines of the city proper. A special crew would come to his mansion and make the building uninhabitable, transport all his valuables to his city base, the Busty Elf. He even spent more than a hundred gold, and those boys were good craftsmen. They check the building for any structural damage, reinforce everything they could, and then haul the luggage he chose to move here for the warmth. As always, some of the stuff they secured were in his basement. He unlocked the door leading to his mansion's dungeon and picked the lantern which Val had come to leave here, next to the door, just in case that her master got the sudden urge to visit his pet. The second he flipped the lantern's light switch, a bright reddish globe of light surrounded Rem and illuminated his every step. Walking down the narrow staircase, he picked up the pace and even jumped the last five well-carved out bluish stone steps. His dungeon was very tiny. Really, how much space would a solver problem need? One small well-reinforced cell, its door wide open, was built at the far south corner of his basement, just in case he had to kidnap somebody and keep them locked up for the ransom money. Rim was a mercenary, not a saint of can. Along the north wall, Val kept spare supplies, extra clothes, blankets, and of course, fuel. One never knew what would happen to Karat and when the Chaos Hordes of the Pit came every two and a half turns, it was good to have a fallback position. A well-lit, warm position. On the basement's east wall, Rem ordered his kennel built. Originally, he was planning on raising war dogs, training and then selling the canines, but his plan was a bust. The noble who was his partner to be outright vanished one evening together with his family, servants, guards, everyone. As a matter of fact, the mansion he resided in was also gone, and when the guard mages desperately tried to locate his missing noble abode, all their spells were for naught. Nothing worked, neither Rem's impressive legwork, the many hours, and good coin he devoted to looking for Count Mesto. Not a clue was discovered, and after a month of wasting money and a lot of his very expensive time, Rem gave up. Now those kennels weren't exactly useless. He found something in the forest, and tamed it. Here, Mushu. Come here. Rem whispered in the dark, slightly damp basement as he knelt. Something enthusiastically hopped at him and soon a dog-sized mushroom was rolling all over the floor and his legs. Mushu was a hop mushroom, native to the ancient forest where his distant cousins grow up and ever larger sizes, but he and his impressive brethren were now thriving both in the forest and sewers. 
Hot mushrooms were small-sized and possessed the intelligence of a dog. Thousands of years living alongside sentient races led them to evolve into house pets and companions, but they can still be dangerous when provoked. Mushu was well trained and could, once per day, use its spores, and those who inhaled them would sleep for an hour, at best. His pet was loyal, and especially in the forest or some of the low dungeons of Karat, like the sewers, was indispensable, almost invisible. For Mushu, those two environments were ideal and best suited to his unique physiology. Hopping around him, the happy mushroom dropped some bones and Rem kicked the human skull to the other side of the basement. Sometimes the traps caught intruders, fools who thought his mansion unprotected and easy to ransack. Since he had no special moats full of earthworms and Mushu had to eat something, Rem always thought that this arrangement was best and the hot mushroom certainly loved him for feeding it well. He could take Mushu with him on this job. After leaving the basement, Rem climbed up his observation tower. In actuality, it was the ceiling and he used the space a few turns ago to build a nest for one of the ancient force large ravens. Letetuchio was a raven the size of his glider one which he had procured at considerable cost from a wizard of the Goryo house, and just as good as flying, stealthily. Especially at night, Lictichio was almost invisible since the ancient ravens were also magical beasts. Ex-monsters, some would call them. Just like his pet Mushu, with the passage of time, people and other races turned some of the critters into pets, helpers, forming almost a symbiotic relationship with them. Rem hauled one freshly killed by his trap, giant cat-sized rat, and offered it to the still sleepy raven. They could fly during the day, yes, but when these large birds were at their best under the cover of darkness, they had excellent dark vision and could fly well even in bad weather. Letetichio's jet black, almost blue feathers made the red-eyed bird especially beautiful to behold, and if someone, except for him of course, tried to pet it, they'd lose more than an eye. His claws were the size of daggers and certainly were sharp as such. The beak was viciously pointy. Letetichio was Rem's getaway bird. He had instructed the critter to circle above his head, high in the air. A short wooden beam clutched in its claws. On said beam, Rem tied one good piece of rope, and if trouble was too much for him to handle, he'd order the trusty bird to swoop down and fly him away. Certainly the ranger's ring, which came with Letitichio, was also a thing most nifty, and he could use it once per day to see through the raven's eyes. Of course, Rem could also listen to his floating librarian and take him on the job. The Lich truly was not as powerful as he was before he had his entire body, yet still his magics were polished. The Holy Undead was also a skilled alchemist, and after recovering the property of his current employer, he could try and determine what it was she was trying to hide so hard. That, and he was able to detect magical auras, traps, and such, which Rem himself couldn't. If you've enjoyed this telling, then please consider subscribing to this channel, liking the video, and sharing, as that would help this channel grow exponentially. Also, Give a little support to the writer and author of this tale, Aragmar, also known as the Black Knight, listed down below. He can be found on Minds.com and is selling books, a uh, Star Shatter, a sci-fi novel, found on Amazon, also linked below. With that, I want to thank you for visiting, have a wonderful night, 
God bless, and farewell. <laughs>